communities all over the United States. Often we think that this kind of tragedy is actually happening in countries outside of the United States. It's got to be in Mexico, or it's in Thailand, or it's in India, but it's not in our country. That's kind of the idea that we Americans have. And when we were first brought, this is first brought to our attention by Mayor Franklin, um, she said, you know, we are not going to have this in Atlanta. She was the first mayor in the whole country that said, this is happening, not on my watch. We're going to start addressing this. And even to this day, Atlanta is the leader in fighting trafficking. It's because one person identified it and said, let's do something about it. But when we first started looking into the issue, most everyone, including law enforcement, thought, well, this is happening in Atlanta, and it's girls that are being brought from other countries into our city. And it is because of men from other cities that are coming in and doing this. We still had a hard time admitting that it was our people and our girls. But I have to tell you that as we have worked in this space for 50 years, first with women and then after Mayor Franklin's encouragement in 2007, began to work with young girls. The girls and the women that we see are your family members. They're our girls, they're our daughters, they're our granddaughters, they're our nieces. It is not someone outside coming in. These are our girls. And beyond that, those who buy and sell the girls in Metro Atlanta are not what you think. Those who capture the girls, it's not because they are looking to be bought and sold. It's because they're in vulnerable situations and there are people who look just like your pastor, but they are not. They're an angel of light, maybe. Is that a good term for them? They talk to these girls and say just exactly what they want to hear. And they're so broken from things that have happened in their lives that they believe them. And once they believe that this person loves them, they will do whatever that person says. And then when they realize what they're really wanting them to do and they try to get away, there are ways that keep them slaved. And the people that buy our girls and young women are Metro Atlanta people, men. And, so, and some of them are family men. It makes no sense. But you know, evil doesn't make sense. That's the reality is the hurt and the pain that we see is not explainable. All we know as people of faith is that we have a great God who sees it and has a way of escape. And the way of escape isn't through law enforcement and it's not through government, but it's through us. That's how he created us. He created us to be his ambassador on this world, in this world, that is as if God himself was reaching out to this girl. That's who we are. We are his holy people, hosting his presence and doing his work. And so I just want to encourage you in that, that this is a situation that is difficult, really, really difficult. And just as your pastor mentioned how many pastors leave there are so many people that say, oh, I want to do something. And once it gets messy, they're out the door. The reality is God has put us in a position wherever we are to play a part in changing the lives of children because God cares so much about that next generation. And so when you step into it, it will be messy. But you've got God's power within you to stay to keep it going. And so this morning, as I begin to share with you the things that um, I have seen and some facts, some statistics that are somewhat hard, I want you not to be discouraged or paralyzed. I want you to be encouraged because God is in you, reconciling the world to himself. So I want to pray before I begin to really dig into the scripture. God, I just thank you so much for this precious church, your church established with your name and your mission. I love the title, 
crossroads. Because quite frankly, Lord, our culture is at a crossroads. Our country is at a crossroads. Our city is at a crossroads. And many girls and women are at a crossroads. And we need a community of fellowship to band together, to be in that place, that juncture, that will help the crossroad turn toward you, toward the cross. And so this morning we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just speak to each heart in the way that you know how to speak to them and realize that anything good that is accomplished is because you, God, have caused it to happen. I pray that you bring clarity. I pray, God, that you bring purpose. I pray that you bring encouragement to this body. And may you expand their tent pegs beyond anything they could have imagined because their heart is set on you. I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to talk, call your attention to Luke 5. Uh, if you have your scriptures, you can check that out. But we're going to talk about uh, some scriptures that um, you've heard before. And uh, you will remember that Jesus was out all over the place doing good. And as he did that, um, there were many people that tried to um, get close to him. And if you remember in, in Luke 5... Hold one moment. Do you remember? I'm just going to tell the story. I'm not seeing where I wanted it to come into play. Excuse me. Jesus was in a home and teaching. You remember this story? It's in Mark as well, where Jesus was teaching, and there was a crowd of people in the room, and there were four friends that had a friend. That needed healing. So this morning I want to talk to you about what it's like to be the friend that needs healing and be the person that needs help. So these four friends were helpers. They did not um, come into this place where um, they were just going to look at the situation and walk away, even though it was pretty impossible. You know, when people in th that time frame had illnesses, many times people looked away from them because they thought that that illness was a result of their own sin. And you remember that Jesus told his disciples over and over again, nope, it is not the result of their sin. It is an opportunity for God to get glory, and that's what happened this day. There were four friends, and they knew that their friend who couldn't walk really wanted to walk. But they maybe have done, done everything they knew how to do. They've taken care of him. They've fed him. Maybe they've taken him to doctors, but nothing had worked. And these four friends banded together as one on top of another and another. And God did something great. So if you remember the story, the friends come and they can't get in the door. Okay? I want you to think about that when any time there's something that needs to be accomplished, God doesn't always, almost always does it with more than one. Yes, one person can do a lot, but many more can do more. And so this morning, I'm going to tell you some facts that I hope will cause you to become someone's heart stirred to initiate change. Because at least one of those four people had to be an initiator. One of those four people said, hey, I've heard about this man who's been a healer. And he had the idea, let's take my friend to Jesus. There has to be an initiator. You all now are going to become initiators because I want to tell you that tonight in Metro Atlanta, there will be 100 girls bought and sold multiple times tonight. I'm talking about girls ages 12 is when they usually are lured in, just as young as this beautiful girl that just danced. And most of the girls fall prey to this situation because of things that's happened to them in their past. Many of you may be aware that childhood sexual abuse is very prevalent. One in four, sometimes people say one in three girls, by the time they reach 18, have been sexually abused. 
And it's usually by someone that they know, family or friend, over 85%. So a person that that girl is supposed to have been able to trust has taken advantage of them. And I just have to stop and say, if it's happened to you, it is not your fault. There's an evil, evil person that wants to take away your potential. And when someone experiences that, it's a breaking of their soul. And many times it causes this person not to be able to move forward in their life. And that's exactly the ploy of the enemy. He wants to come and steal, kill, and destroy. And that's one of his ways of doing it is through childhood sexual abuse. Because what happens is that that trauma takes on a, a growth pattern in the brain. Did you know that trauma is held on the right side of your brain? Okay. But your ability to make good decisions is on the right, the right side of your brain. And so the left side of your brain. So what happens is that someone who's experienced that, that part of their brain begins to develop more, that right side. That's your creative side. That's the side where your emotions are stored. Your ability to decide who's safe and who's not safe is on the left side of the brain. And it just almost atrophies unless there's some healing that happens. And because of that, here's this little girl, eight, nine, maybe younger, and she's had that experience. So she's looking for someone to affirm her, or she thinks that her only affirmation is that. And so here's an older person, an older male, who's looking for a way to ensnare a young girl and so he says just the right things. Why, you're beautiful. Like, you could be a model. Like, I have got this business. I, I think you could probably go to Hollywood. Or I just want to be your boyfriend. I love you. And when someone wants love and they haven't received love, or they received it in the wrong way, it's easy to walk toward that evil. And so as that child walks toward that evil, this trafficker continues his game until he tells her that she has to earn her keep. And did you know that most girls have to bring in $1,000 a night? Did you know that in Atlanta, a trafficker makes more money than anywhere in the United States, $33,000 a week? which is a large amount of money for a year, if you can only imagine. So this is not like some fling this trafficker is doing. It's his business. It is a business, and the girls are his product. So it's dehumanizing in the greatest way. That is exactly the opposite of what God designed. God created each of us with great potential, every child, every son and daughter to become his special treasured possession, to accomplish his great work. And if the enemy can steal it before she even gets started, he's won. But we know, just like that dance, he didn't win. No, oh, God is the victor yet. Jesus has won the victory because people like you will say, I'm going to make a difference. And one of the things that I have to say about becoming aware is that a lot of times people think, I'm going to go out, I'm going to, oh, I, I'm going to rescue all these girls. I'm going to take all these girls. I'm going to take them home with me. And that generally does not work because of the situation they've been in. It's not safe to do that for you or for her. There's a way that we can all do something. So we've got to, first of all, be aware and that should stir up a fire inside of us saying, no, not in my city. No, not with my girls. No, I'm going to make a difference. So an initiator is someone that is like, I am not going to let it happen. That's one friend that's needed. That one friend that's an initiator then influences other people to join. And when you influence someone else to join, you get more giftedness in this movement to make a difference. And you look toward maybe someone that has the gift of planning, 
okay, we need to do something. So what are we going to do? What is the thing that is inside of each of you that you could contribute, make a difference for a girl? Well, one of the things that's easy to do from the very, very beginning, when you hear about this and you feel called toward it, is to pray. I loved hearing that Amina's mom and that you were mighty prayer warriors because there's so much prayer that has to happen. You cannot even begin to imagine the darkness that our girls have experienced. And that darkness wants to hold on to them. And the only way that darkness is broken is through prayer. I have to tell you that we have a group of about 100 people that every Monday I send out prayer requests to, and they pray over the work at Wellspring Living. We have a group of about seven women that every Tuesday morning we're on a phone call together, and we pray for an hour over this situation because only way that the chains are broken is through God's power in prayer. So please pray as an initiator, as any one of the four friends, all of us can pray. As an initiator and as someone that's able to plan and create a system for helping, I think it's so important that you look to how can I connect with people that are doing the work, and we'd love that to be Wellspring Living. But also, how can I connect just right here in my community? You are living in, or you are situated in Cobb County, like the seat of Cobb County is the way I like to look at it. And 15 years ago, when we first started working in, in um, helping young women, I thought that the women that would walk through the doors of our Wellspring home would be women that lived inside the city of Atlanta. But do you know where the majority of the girls came from? Cobb County. Cobb County. 15 years ago, I would say that 60% of every of the women who we served each year were from Cobb County. And I don't I I don't know why, but I know there's a serious issue. So I don't I want you to be aware that if that is true, we can prevent that. How do you prevent that? As someone that's an initiator who's got a heart for this and someone who's a planner that wants to do something. Well, all of us can do this. We can love those little children the best we know how. Do everything that you can to love and care for them. And as your pastor said last week, you're a parent to children that you might not have biologically parented. And so I want to encourage you to be that parent. In other words, you look at this little girl who maybe doesn't have that mom or grandmother telling her how beautiful she is, and you tell her. You tell her, you are beautiful. God created you for good, and I believe in God's goodness in you. And you say it again and again and again. Because if we speak truth into these children, they won't believe the lies of a trafficker or anybody else. So we have that responsibility as someone that's a friend of God to be a friend to our children. So I just encourage you to think about that. As someone that cares and you're fired up and you want to be involved and you want to connect with those who are trying to change the world and change this community to be safer for every child, then I ask you to look at all of the giftings that you have. So if we were to go follow this story further, they get to the house and they can't get in and somebody had a bright idea. I'm going to do something outside of the box. And I love the fact that I know that your pastors think outside of the box. If they had been just the traditional, they would have stood at the door and waited and waited and waited. And maybe their friend might have never seen Jesus. But someone said, I'm going to climb up high. I'm going to dig through the roof. And I'm going to sit my friend at Jesus' feet. And that's the kind of innovation, that's the kind of thinking that's needed in this. So I'll tell you a story. So I say to everyone, you have something that's life-changing that you can do that's so small. It doesn't take but a little thing, and it can change the trajectory of a child's life. And um, we had an event the other night, and we used this song called The Best Days of Our Life. I don't know if you've heard it. I'd never heard it before. It's a real cool song, really moving type of song. And it just reminded me of a, a time that I was with the girls last about three weeks ago, Labor Day weekend. 
um, had a girl who wanted to help. And uh, I always just loved for our girls to have the opportunity to experience um, something they might not have ever experienced or even thought they could experience, just something fun. And so I called a friend and I said, hey, could you teach our girls kayaking? She said, well, I can't, but I've got a friend that can. So she and her husband came and met us at a lake and uh, she had a kayak for every girl. So now these girls have never kayaked before, right? Um, and some of them were very afraid of the water. But Lisa, who came, she came with great teaching and instruction, and she came prepared with her kayaks, and she came with confidence that you may be scared to death, but you can do this. So here we go. All the girls get in their kayaks, and I'll never forget one of the girls. I'll call her name Lily. That's not her real name. She got in, and her eyes were big as saucers, like, oh, I'm going to die. I know I'm going to die. This is not going to work, you know. And there, and, But she was like, but I'm going to try. So she gets in, and Lisa just is very calm and patient and shows her how to do the ropes and, and paddle around. Okay, all, all of these girls had fear. They were so afraid. They didn't think they could do it. Fast forward three hours, they were all over that lake. Like so far away from, the, from me on the shore that I was freaking out. Like, come back here, you're too far out. You're, you're, too far. you're having too much fun. It was crazy. They had a blast doing something they never thought they could do. But the biggest thing I saw through that experience is they overcame their fear. It was a little something that took Lisa three hours. But those girls will never forget it. Because as we were walking back to the van, one after another, after another, after another said, this is the best day. This has been the best day. I can't believe I did it. I can't believe I'm going to tell my mom and my dad and I'm going to tell everybody, I did it. I know how to kayak. I did it. A little thing. So in your mind, in your outside of the box thinking, how can you dig through the roof for a child that you know? Or maybe connect with us and help us with a girl that we're working with that will help her realize that she can overcome that fear. Because quite frankly, the girls that we get to serve have had a lot of terrible days, really terrible days. And they need not just one, but two, three, four, hundreds of best days to retrain that brain to look and find ways they can experience the best day of their life. And that's how you can help. You can help here in this community where there's definitely a need. I'm just telling you there's a need in this community for you to care for your children in very innovative ways to make a difference. And there's ways you can connect with us for that same way. So making something available to a girl, to a woman, that changes the trajectory of their life is an outside of the box, innovative type thinking thing. But when you go down deeper, the best day of any girl or any, wa or any trafficker, excuse me, the best day of any girl or any woman who's been trafficked is for her to know that she's been sat in front and at the feet of Jesus. Because you can dig through the roof and you can do innovative things. People are doing that all the time. But the reality is if this girl and this woman does not sit at the feet of Jesus and get the true healing that she needs, she'll never be whole again. She'll still be vulnerable. She'll be vulnerable to another trafficker or to another person. So beyond think outside the box, do something innovative, I want to ask you that in the middle of you caring for this child that you're going to now meet up with in the next week or this woman that you're going to meet up with that has children in the next week, don't leave out the most important thing, Jesus. He's our healer. He's our restorer. He's the one that transforms. He's the one that turns our lives around. And if we as friends don't 
just dig, but we don't sit them at the feet of Jesus, there never will be life change. They'll never be able to walk in freedom. The beautiful piece of this story is so we, the innovator and the, and the executor got down and he, he dug in and they got him into the um, feet of Jesus. And what happened? Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Walk. Walk in freedom. So as you give her Jesus, freedom comes. But freedom doesn't come one day and it be perfect. That fourth type of friend, a maintainer, someone that's going to walk beside her, a mentor, someone that's going to be there in the dark of night when their doubts come, that's also a friend that's needed. So as you think about who you are and how God has wired you and what you are able to do, I want to give you some ideas of how you can be involved with the work that we're doing and how God can work through all of us. You know, we have a program for our girls, 12 to 17. It's hard to believe there's a 12-year-old that would walk through our doors, but we've had 12-year-olds that walk through our doors. I'll never forget Amira. We were at um, another girl's graduation. Every time a girl finishes our program, we have one graduation for one girl because I'm telling you, we haven't had many days in their lives to celebrate. We celebrate big time. So she gets to pick out her favorite food. We decorate the room in her favorite color. We just go crazy. So we were all in there having graduation for another girl, and little Amira was sitting there. And she was kind of large for her age. I didn't know she was only 12. But something that was remarkable about me watching her that day is she was sucking her thumb. So I said to one of the coaches, I said, oh, my goodness, Amira's sucking her thumb. She says, yes, she's only 12. And I'm like, oh. You remember me talking about how the brain gets kind of overcompensating here and not very much here? Do you realize that when that happens, emotional growth, emotional maturity is stopped? So here's this little five-year-old girl who hadn't gotten healed yet. And there she sat with her thumb in her mouth. I'm telling you, this is real. So as we look at little 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14, 15, 16, 17-year-olds, we want to provide for them the academic needs that they need because most of them come in, they've either been out of school or they're a year or two behind. We only get to keep them about nine months. So we have worked with Fulton County Schools and their virtual school, and every girl has their own path. And do you know that within nine months, these girls get on grade level? You know why? Because they're smart. They are smart. They wouldn't be alive if they weren't smart. They're resourceful. They're resilient. And the reality is they just need this access to become more who she needs to be. So if you know a child in your community that's struggling academically, help them. That's one thing you can do. If you want to come and help us with tutoring and things like that, we would love that. Secondly, we want to provide life skills. Most of the girls, <clears throat> they've missed out on the things that most girls learn when they're teenagers, like how to even clean up your room, how to cook a meal, all of those kinds of things. Yesterday, we had a celebration called Journey Around the World. And with our life skills, we have coaches that are in the home with our women. Our staff work alongside our girls, but our volunteers lead our life skills group because, see, we believe that you have even better skills than we do, and you coming in is such a refreshment to the girls, a, such a belief that somebody believes in me. And so Amy and her team came in, and they did a six-weeks class on event planning. So yesterday we had journey around the world. You should have been there. Every girl had to study a country. She had to create a meal and bring out facts that she's going to share, decorate this board, and, uh, and everybody came. Family, friends, it was a great day. And so we get on our airplane, flight 2016 at gate 300, and we take off and we go. We go into every country. And as we land at that country, a girl comes up and tells facts about her country. And then she goes to her station, and everybody gets to go and enjoy the, the food that she's created. 
And what I watched is I watched these girls all around the room at their little stations. I saw joy. I saw them laughing. I saw them performing. They weren't these little girls who came in with no hope in their eyes. They were empowered to be who they needed to be. One girl in particular had to be uh, transported to the hospital last week because she had suicide ideation. In other words, the reality is they come into this safe place, they get out of the chaos, and sometimes the mind does bad things. But what was so fun was to see her dressed up as Miss USA with these hair bands of red, white, and blue. And she was laughing and carrying on like crazy. Because, see, Jesus is still the healer. And someone, Amy, was strong enough, persevered long enough through six weeks and telling them they can do it that provided her a platform to thrive. So you can come with your special skills, whether you're event planning, whether you are ch uh, financial management. We have some lady that came uh, several weeks ago, and she was teaching, how do you keep a checkbook? I mean, it was it said, had monopoly money, and they had the best time. Or if you're a, a fashion designer, or if you're someone that does makeup, or you love to cook, or you just want to come and have fun. These girls need many, many people not just staff, to come in and love on them. Because every time someone new comes in and cares for them, it's a, another affirmation. It's another best day, a best day. I'm worth it. God loves me. God is going to help me. These people are going to help me. I'm not by myself. That's a big thing you guys can do. We also work with, um, those are our girls. We do therapy. You can't do therapy, but, so, but you can do all these other things. You can come to our graduation sometime. I'd love you to come and watch this transformational experience. It's awesome. You can come with a couple of women and bring uh, food and play games with them in the evenings. We love that too. So there's all kinds of ways you can be involved with the girls. But I want to tell you that not only do we serve girls 12 to 17, we serve young women 18 and up. Young women who are stuck in a lifestyle that many call prostitution. But let me just tell you the reality is every young woman that is in that situation, that has walked through our doors, guess what happened to them 12, 13, 14. Yeah, they had the same experience our girls had. There was no intervention for them at that time. And so because of that, they continued a pattern that was not their choice, but it was their only way to survive. Most of the women that we serve have children. There's this thing the Aspen Institute talks about is this two-generation impact. And I think about that, that's really good and sounds real scientific. Jesus talked about that. Don't let anything hinder a little child from coming to me. How can we help these little children who have moms that are in this situation? Our young women come in, they get a place to stay. We call it the Renewed Hope House because that's when they have renewed hope. There's they. Crisis stabilization, lots of therapy, lots of Jesus, and then they transition into independent living. We have some apartments where they can live. They learn how to live in an apartment, take care of themselves. But then one of the things that has been the biggest hindrance to our young women staying healthy is sustainable employment and stable housing. So think about it. How are they going to get into an apartment when they have no rent history? And how are they going to get a job when they really have no employment history? So we were praying about that. And just like, you know, I say, you have to pray about everything. In 2014, our uh, board said, you know, we've got to do something about this. We've got to do something about this. And um, we had talked, actually, in the fall of 2013, had done a, a, a whole idea, like, we need to create a way to get our women work ready. We need to be very much more intentional about it. We need a partner to help us with this. We were praying, but we didn't know what God's answer would be. January 2014, I get a call.
from a lady who works at Ronstadt. She lives, it's this interesting, she lives in Orlando, Florida. She calls me, she said, I saw your TED Talk, and we want to help you at Ronstadt get your women jobs. And I'm thinking, you live in Orlando, I live in Atlanta, this doesn't make sense, but God, you are answering my prayer. I don't understand it, mystery, but I'll take it. So we get together, and she brings in some people from the Atlanta area, and we start talking about what our needs are. We need to have these kinds of classes. And she said, well, we already have a curriculum for that. It's called em uh, Employee Work, Explore Work. And so they gave us their, their workbook and said, you adjust it for the women in the verbiage that you need, and we'll teach it. They spent eight weeks in a class with professionals teaching our young women who they are, what their skill levels are, how to, how, to, um, how to write a resume, how to go into an interview. And do you know, after that little pilot that we started in February, every one of these young women were able to go into a paid apprenticeship for 12 weeks at $12 an hour? Ronstadt did that for us. Can you believe that? So that was just starting at a small, small thing. But we realized that th this is something that's so powerful, we don't want to lose it with just Wellspring. So we opened it up in the community. So in the Carver YMCA and at the Fowler YMCA, we now have what we call the Empowered Living Academy. And three days a week, our young women come there. And we need people to help us with life skills. We need people to be praying over that. We need people to help with meals, uh, especially at our Fowler YMCA for the lunches. And then on Fridays, they go to Ronstadt. They get dressed for success. They get all the information they need. We provide their, par their martyr cards, and we provide child care. Because we have to remove every obstacle that would keep her. Remember, dig through that, dig through that roof. We've got to remove those obstacles so she can sit at the feet of Jesus and receive what Jesus had and what these innovators that have come around us can give. And in the last two years, 77 young women have walked through our doors at one of those YMCA's, received the training, personal development, therapy, they get Microsoft Office certified with a computer when they walk into their apprenticeship. And these young women are walking into great jobs. And only God could have done that. <laughs> only God could have done that. And so I tell you today that we need friends for the girls. Friends like the four friends that Jesus, that set their friend at the feet of Jesus. We need people that will be inspired and become an initiator. I'm going to do something. We need you to be an influencer and to get other people to come around with you. We need people to think and plan and figure out how can I do what God wants me to do in this situation. Because Proverbs says, once you know. And you see that those who are walking around you are walking toward death. It's your responsibility. God says, I see it. You now know you have a responsibility. Find a way to do something. And then as you have begun to work, don't forget to continue the work. Because if you don't stay alongside someone, if we don't disciple them down that road, there's always that possibility that the enemy will snatch them away. We have to be the ones that are keeping that ground fertile and growing toward a beautiful future. And so I just want to leave with you this thought, that God has called all of us at this place, in this time, in this situation, to be a change maker. And I believe with all my heart that you're going to do it. And I would love to see you partner with us to make every girl and every woman and give her the opportunity to really live and see her dreams come fulfilled and experience the goodness and the greatness of our God. Let me pray for you as I close. God, I just thank you so much for this beautiful congregation that loves you. They know how to worship you with all their heart. They love you with all their heart. And I believe they love their neighbors as themselves. And because of that, God, I just ask that you would strengthen and empower them. 
that one plus one with you is like a million. You can do so much more than we could think or dream because we make that decision to give ourselves to you. And that's what we do right now. I just want to commit myself and I want to say for these beautiful people that they are laying their selves before you. They are saying, hear your servants. I'm listening. Speak, Lord Jesus. Show us the way to go. And we will celebrate with you the many victories of wives who come to realize that they're your treasured possession. And that one after another, a beautiful picture of your love will be shown in this community. And I praise you and I thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.